So good afternoon everybody. Uh, you're watching Echo at Holstein's YouTube channel. We're actually chopping corn salad. This is the first day, but we've got something that we're uh, that's pretty important that we're doing. We're checking the length of cut on the corn silage and the kernel processing. And we've got Bill the expert here. <laughs> Not hard. And uh, he's got to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. So what we're doing is making sure we've got the proper length, making sure that the corn silage is long enough to be effective inside the cow to stimulate her rumen so she chews her cud more and keeps her gut healthy. But we also don't want it so long that she can take her nose and sort out the pieces that she doesn't want to get to the goodies that taste good that she does want. So we want it, again, long enough that she can't sort it, short enough, or excuse me, short enough that she can't sort it, and but long enough to be effective on the inside. So what we have here is it's called a Penn State shaker box. It's simply a series of three sieves. And what we're gonna do is we've got a sample of corn silage in there. We're gonna shake. We're gonna so shake you start with a ball. certain weight, right? Uh, not or, even. We just no. Nope. We'll measure. We'll, we'll weigh the trays as they come. Okay. Out. And then figure out your and figure percentage. Out the proportions from there. That's the exciting pipe part. So Bill sells an oculent, or you're the. What is your title? Uh, the account manager for Eastern Wisconsin. For Chris Hansen. Yeah, for Chris Hansen. Yeah. yeah. And we're using some of the Chris Hansen this year because we heard it was really good stuff. <laughs> and Because uh, it is really good stuff. It, it is really good is stuff, really he good. says. Okay. So I believe him. Good. And so interestingly enough, what we're actually doing is we're going to add live bacteria to the corn silage. And, uh, you know, generally we think of bacteria as a bad thing, but it's also a very good thing. We have good bacteria in our stomachs, it's humans, cows, and then we're gonna add bacteria to this so that we can help it ferment. So when we add a specific bacteria, we know what it does when the silage ferments and we can sort of control the different acids that it makes and make sure it's done efficiently and quickly to make the best quality feed we possibly can for Echo Wood Holsteins. So we've got 13 grams on the top 13 grams on the top. And while we're doing this, the other thing we're gonna do is look on this middle screen, and we're gonna see just how well the kernels of corn are getting busted up by the forage harvester. And as I told Brian when I first got here, this looks absolutely fantastic. About the biggest piece I can find is a remnant of a, of a, of a kernel, so this is just fantastic. The more that we can grind up those uh, kernels of corn, the more available it is to the cow, the more quickly her her uh, digestive tract can use the starch, and the more energy she can get out of it. So we love to see this. We absolutely love to see this. So we're at 13. Yeah, so we're at, we have a total sample of 240. We're gonna take that 13 and divide by 240. I, I failed the third grade four times, so I gotta use a calculator. <laughs> so we're at only 5% on our top screen. So we're still not quite to where we need to be. Okay. So my suggestion is we're gonna call the forage harvester and have them make it a little bit longer yet. So, yeah. Okay, well I'm, I'm going to go have him lake fit it out and then we'll, um, we'll wait for another load to come in and then we'll show you on the next one to see if it's any better. So Sounds good. All right. So we, uh, we we're having the chopper length fit it out. His setting was on 0.75 inch, so it's like three quarters of an inch on his length of cut. And he lengthened it out to like 0.79, so a little bit longer. And then Bill's going to shake it again. But we're gonna talk about the moisture and why we want it at the uh, moisture it is. What, what do you think we're at right now, Bill? I think we're at uh, 68%. 68%. 68%. And, and, and what's the reason we want it? So, great there. question. We, we, want it, we want it right around 67, 68, somewhere in that range because we're always, everything with making forage like this is a compromise. The longer we let it go, the more of those kernels turn to starch and we've got corn on the cob, so to speak, but then the stalk is really, really 
woody, it's really uh, fibrous. It's like eating celery that's, that's super old, or eating a carrot that's really bitter. It's the same way for cows. So if we go the other way, we put it up too wet, the kernels themselves aren't developed enough, so we don't get enough energy, we don't get enough starch, but the stalk is nice and juicy and the cows think it's delicious. So it's always a compromise when we're making forage between finding the right place in the plant's life cycle between yield and starch and making it really highly palatable and delicious and, and young and lush for the cow. So it's like eating baby carrots are delicious. A carrot that's this big and this big around isn't. Uh, so it's, it's finding that right spot in its life cycle to harvest. Super important, it's super important that we do this at the right place. So I got a question. Let's say your, um, your kernel is hard, but you're, and, or there's not much milk left in the kernel, but your um, stock is wet yet. How, yes. how far do you push the moisture on the, total, on the total plant? So this was a great year for growing silage because that's what we ran into in these Right, that's what we, we ran into. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, right? It was the, it was these, build out years of corn that are full of starch, full of energy, but yet the plants are still pretty young and digestible. The cow's gonna love how that tastes. She's gonna be able to digest it very, very quickly. So this year, if last year the, the minimum uh, moisture was 67, I think you can do it at 69 this year. I think you can give yourself a couple of points this year and still be in that safe range. You might leach, you, know, you might have a little bit of leach shake of juice okay. out the pile. But as far as a cow health, cow performance thing, I think we're gonna make just fantastic growth in these guys okay. this year. Yeah, because that's exactly what we saw. We saw a cob that was unusually developed beyond what the vegetative plants. So what what for negative effects will we get if the corn is too wet besides leaching? So if it's too wet, it may simply have some time left to grow. We may just not get as much yield give up some of that yield because it simply has time left to grow and get bigger and fill out. But if it's drying down, will it still be? Uh, once it's reached kind of maturity, it won't, you know, once it really gets to that point, it gets to you know, the, the lower 60s, it's done. Okay. We're not going to add much. What, what The little bit that we're going to gain from that starch, we're going to lose from the plants dry, drying down and we're going to lose a bunch of air. Okay. Yeah. So, no, I think it's going to be a great year. I think it has been a great year. It's got a beautiful growing season. Right. So everybody's and, pretty optimistic. And the tonnage is really good this year, right? Most places? Yes. Everybody is. It's a good year to sell a knock quite frankly. So everybody's got 10% more forage, they need 10% more a knock so, Okay. Yeah. yeah. So normally we use a different brand, but this year we are trying Chris Hansen. And we're. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get a 10 pound corn milk. Maybe. So, <laughs> we'll see. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, that's the neat thing about our industry. It's very, very uh, technically advanced. So we'll know in a matter of a, a couple of months here when we come back and start taking samples. We're gonna, we'll take some samples, see how it fermented. We'll send it to a laboratory. We'll use a near infrared spectroscopy, something okay. I don't know the exact word, but you think of just how sciencey this has gotten. So we'll be able to look at how it ferments. We'll be able to see if there's any molds, any any of those bad things that sometimes gets into corn silage when yep. things don't go as planned. So yeah, you know it's amazing how much technology goes into feeding cows. If, if people were as finicky about their diet as we are about feeding cows, uh, yeah, we'd be exponentially healthier as a society. We're down to the nanogram on some of these nutrients that we're balancing for these cows. And uh, I always laugh, we'll, uh, we'll have a meeting with a, with a nutritionist and a producer, they'll, 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 they'll argue out to the last you know, nanogram or something, and then when we're done, we'll, we'll have you know, three beers and a hot dog for lunch ourselves. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll go to such extremes oh, yeah, for, right. to get the cow's diet absolutely perfect, and then we'll go and that, that is for sure true around here. Our cows get fed the same time every day. They get like the same thing every day. And they like it, but 
it's a lot more consistent and healthy than what we're eating. I know that. Like they're they're balanced to a T. And absolutely, it's, it's ironic. They, they they aren't eating a bunch of junk food. Drinking Mountain Dew. And, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So. So the um, way a cow is uh, essentially an Olympic athlete when you look at how many calories she takes in and the amount of calories of milk she produces. It's unbelievable how efficient the, the modern dairy cow is. So we have to get it right. Okay. We can't. She won't. We can't. We have to feed her perfectly every single day. Right. Now, yeah. Down to the nanogram. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing I was talking. I've showed you guys our max pack before. That's the thing we're packing with here. And Bill is actually the one that this winter, or sometime, he's gonna he's gonna check and see. If that thing did its job, he's got a way of checking how many. Okay, so how do you measure how many square feet are in a pile? Uh, or, we measure pounds of feet in a square foot. Okay, in a cubic foot. Yep. All right. Yep. And you, he's yep. got like a drill, and he drills into the right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. so you'll see him again when we um, when yeah. we do that. You know, this wild, we'll look yep. back and we'll look at how how well it packed. And see if that max pack is really yep. doing what it should be doing. Yep. Very important to get all the air packed out of it. Uh, super, super important. Corn soil it goes through anaerobic fermentation, or that's the goal, is or in other words, without air. So we can't really begin to have this corn silage here and get to where we want it to be until we get the air out. So the best way we can get the air out is this right here. Is, is, Mechanically driving equipment on it with a lot of weight. The more air we can get out, the more quickly, the more good silage acids we can make. And I uh, just can't can't say enough just how imperative it is to, to get every bit of air out we possibly can with packing our silage. Okay, so the chopper Dawson changed it to the chopper, and now we've got a new sample here. And uh, Bill's going to shake this one out and weigh it and see if it's any better. You can see it already. He thinks it looks better. So that's worth a lot to have him come out and do that because if you chop all your feet too short for the year, it's just not good for the cow. It's, what is too short? I mean, you DAs and acidosis and yeah. what else? Um, the biggest thing is your butter fat. Butter fat. It's compressed butter fat. We just don't get the rumen working the, ideally. So, the, uh, yeah, her pH gets uh, too low and we're not making good butter fat. That's, okay. That's, that's a big dollar. Yep, and we get paid on pounds of butter fat and pounds of protein. So, we need uh, all the butter fat and protein we can get. And if it, it's going to depress butter fat from chopping your feed too short, it's definitely something you don't want to be doing. Plus, cow health isn't as good when the feed's short. I know that. So now we're probably up into the 20s. You want to be there? Yep. And I think uh, we're going to have somebody come out again tomorrow and shake it. And I think John's going to come right. Good. So, yeah. Just to make sure that different fields, uh, that it's still consistent. We know that happens. You go from one field to the next, one variety to the next, and all of a sudden it just chops differently than the one before, and you got to adjust the board. Yeah. Right. That happens. Okay. All right. All right. I think we're good. I think we're good okay. to go. Make some good coffee now. Sounds good. Thanks, Bill.